Hello, my name is Steve. Welcome to SA. In Japan, it is widely believed that everything is anon. After some children disappear mysteriously, it is believed that they are hidden by gods or monsters, thus disappearing from human society. This is the Japanese word for shinin, which can also be translated as miraculously disappeared. Over time, the word shinin has been given a more mysterious by people. Today I'm going to talk about a girl who went missing while participating in a bamboo shoot digging activity with her family. After the incident, the police sent dogs to track her, but after they tracked the same location, they stopped and could not continue to track. The girl seems to be Shinin. This is what happened in Kagawa, Japan, the disappearance of Onishi Yuki. The story takes place in Kagawa, the smallest prefecture on Shikoku Island. There is a city in the middle of the prefecture called Sakade City, which is the entrance to the Cedar Bridge near the Shikoku Island side, where shipbuilding and chemical industries are developed. The protagonist of the story is named Onishi Yuki, who was born in 2000. In addition to her parents, Onishi Yuki's family has an older sister, and the family of four lives together. Yuki's parents are both employees of a company. Since Yuki went to school, her mother sometimes took her to participate in some activities to cultivate children's ability and knowledge. As summer approaches, Japan's annual Greenery Day has arrived. This is a legal holiday. On this day, companies and schools will be closed, and all parks will be open to the public for free. The festival aims to promote people to be close to nature. It should be noted here that before 2005, Greenery Day was on April 29th, and since 2006, Greenery Day was changed to May 4th. The case happened in 2005, and Greenery Day is still April 29th. April 29th, 2005, happened to be Friday, thus forming a three-day holiday with the following Saturday and Sunday. Whenever Greenery Day comes, various attractions will engage in some special activities to attract tourists. Gashikidai in Sakade City held a bamboo shoot digging event to attract tourists. Gashikidai is located along the coast of the Sido Inland Sea, and from the mountain there is a beautiful view of the Sido Inland Sea. In addition to Sida Bridge, you can also see the surrounding islands, and the scenery is very beautiful. Yuki's mother was instantly attracted by the beautiful scenery of Gashikidai, and the activity of digging bamboo shoots was also very characteristic. So she decided to go to Gashikidai with her family to dig bamboo shoots on Greenery Day. However, something unexpected happened that day. April 29, 2005, is a Friday. Today is the long-awaited Greenery Day for the whole family, and the Yuki family woke up early. Unfortunately, Yuki's father received a temporary call from the company. Due to some urgent matters, he had to go to the company to work overtime and was unable to participate in this event with his family. Yuki's mother felt that since they had already signed up, the children were looking forward to it, so she decided to set off for Gashikidai with her two daughters. Let's look at the map. Yuki's home is at this location, it is located in Hamanocho town in Takamatsu city. The event location, Gashikidai, is located at this location, which is located in Sakade city, about 16 kilometers away from the two, which can be reached by car for half an hour. Five-year-old Yuki wore one of her favorite pink hats that day. The mother then drove Yuki and her sister to Gashikidai. This is a schematic diagram of Gashikidai, which is surrounded by dense mountain forests. This is the location of the Gashikidai Visitor Center, next to a wide road, and since today is a public holiday, there are a lot of cars on the road. This is a car campground where tourists pitch tents for camping. Next to the car camp is a lake called Tombi. The lake is 315 meters long, 65 meters wide and 3 meters deep. Local folklore has it that the lake is a little wicked, and it is said because every year there are people who are inexplicably poured into the lake, as if there is an evil force that attracts people close to the shore. There is a bamboo forest to the north of the car camping site. 
Since it is spring, there are large and small bamboo shoots growing in the bamboo forest. This is where the Yuki family participated in the bamboo shoot digging activity. There is a trail from the car campsite to the bamboo forest. After walking along the trail for a while, they will come to a circular square, which is very spacious and usually has a lot of tourists. Continuing on, it will be divided into two roads, one will lead to Tombi Lake, and the other will reach a place called East House, which is also the meeting point for this event. This morning, Yuki's mother took Yuki and her sister to the meeting point in Gashikidai. A total of 60 people from 19 families and some volunteers participated in this event. The organizers first welcomed everyone from afar, and then they introduced today's itinerary. This day's activities are mainly divided into two parts. The first half is free time. Everyone can enjoy the scenery and flowers on the mountain. The second half is the time for the bamboo shoot digging competition, which starts at 1 p.m. and ends at 2 p.m. After the assembly, the families disbanded. Under the leadership of her mother, Yuki and her sister played to their heart's content in the forest, and they spent a pleasant morning. The time came to 1 p.m., and the theme of this event, the bamboo shoots digging competition, officially started. Everyone in the family as a unit dug more bamboo shoots. The winner is the family with the most bamboo shoots dot and the winner can get a beautiful gift. Yuki. Her mother and sister happily ran into the bamboo forest with tools for digging bamboo shoots. Five-year-old Yuki soon saw a bamboo shoot, but he was too weak to dig it, so she was only responsible for finding the bamboo shoot. The job of digging bamboo shoots was handed over to her mother and sister, and the time passed quickly before they knew it. When the time came to 1.30 in the afternoon, the Yuki family had only dug up three bamboo shoots for the time being. At this time, Yuki found the fourth bamboo shoot in a long corridor, and she shouted for her mother to come over. At this time, Yuki saw that other families had dug up five or six bamboo shoots. She was not willing to be left behind and wanted to find more. So she said to her mother and sister, I will find another bamboo shoot. Then, she left excitedly. Mother thought Yuki wouldn't run too far, she should be back soon. And surrounded by people participating in the event, there should be no danger, so the mother can only tell Yuki to come back quickly. The time came to 1.50 p.m. At this time, 20 minutes have passed since Yuki left, and she has not come back yet. In fact, Yuki's mother has always been a little worried, after all, Yuki is still young. But she was completely immersed in the activities of digging bamboo shoots, and she also had to take care of Yuki's sister, so she couldn't keep looking at Yuki. After finding that Yuki still hadn't come back, her mother took her sister to the direction where Yuki left. But they searched for a long time and found that Yuki did not seem to be in the bamboo forest. The time came to 2 p.m., which is the end time of the bamboo shoot digging activity. Families who participated in the event went to the East House to gather with the bamboo shoots they had dug. The mother also returned to the East House after searching to no avail, thinking that Yuki might have returned here. She eagerly asked several people who attended the event if they had seen a little girl in a pink hat. But everyone said they had never seen the girl. At this time, the mother was already very anxious. She had no intention of listening to the organizer counting the bamboo shoots dug up by each family. She entrusted Yuki's sister to other parent, and then returned to the bamboo forest alone to search. She searched along the long corridor, calling out Yuki's name as she walked, but she never got any response. The mother felt that Yuki might have lost her way in the bamboo forest, and she immediately rushed back to the East House to inform the event organizer of Yuki's disappearance, and provided Yuki's characteristics. The missing person, Onishi Yuki, five years old, wears a long-sleeved shirt with red and orange stripes on the upper body, trousers with three orange stripes on the lower body, shoes with a rabbit pattern, shoulder-length short hair, and wears a pink hat and a pair of white gloves. After understanding the basic situation, the organizer began to call on the participants to help return to the bamboo forest to find Yuki. 
the time came to 3 p.m. Everyone has been searching in the bamboo forest for nearly an hour. They have searched almost every corner, but they still haven't found any trace of Yuki. Many people went to Gashikidai that day, and if Yuki got lost, someone would definitely see it. But an hour later Yuki was still missing. The organizers are aware of the seriousness of the problem and the situation is beyond their control. They immediately called the police. At 3.45 p.m., police cordoned off the visitor center in Gashikidai after initial knowledge of the situation. The organizer provided the police with a list of all those who participated in the event. There are three people provided useful information, after police questioning all of them. Let's look at the map. This is where Yuki separated from her mother. The first witness, a girl, said she had seen Yuki at the location and they had a brief conversation. Yuki then walked away along the long corridor. The second witness, a man, said he was on the phone at the location of the East House meeting point. He stumbled across Yuki in a pink hat. Here she was. She was walking along the long corridor at the time and then entered the bamboo forest. Since the witness was on the phone at the time, the phone call records show that he saw Yuki at 1.40 p.m., 10 minutes after Yuki separated from her mother. Another person who attended the event told police that at 1.48 p.m. he saw a suspicious man emerge from somewhere in the bamboo forest. The suspicious man was carrying a huge backpack so he was impressed. At that time, the witness was digging bamboo shoots. He thought that the man with the backpack was also the one who participated in the activity of digging bamboo shoots, so he said to the man, there are bamboo shoots here. However, the backpack man was very rude and ignored him at all. Then the man with the backpack got into the bushes again and walked straight down. The map shows that if the man with the backpack went straight down, there was a chance that he had reached the location where another witness saw Yuki. It's a pity that none of the people who participated in this event fit the characteristics of a backpacker man. It seems that the backpacker is not a participant in the activity. It is possible that he came to dig bamboo shoots by himself. Since there were no other witnesses, and there was no surveillance equipment near the bamboo forest, the identity and whereabouts of the man with the backpack were unknown. This time, the police dispatched a police dog for tracking to participate in the search. The police dog sniffed the cup Yuki had used, and then walked along the long corridor of the bamboo forest. What is strange is that the police dog suddenly stopped and did not continue to move forward after reaching a certain position in the bamboo forest. This location is where the first witnesses met Yuki. A careful search of the area around the site by police found nothing. At this time, the police investigation was in trouble, and they had to ask for the support of the local fire brigade. At 5 p.m., firefighters arrived at the bamboo forest. They are conducting a wider search with police. Searchers searched from the bamboo forest to the northern coast, and the search continued until 9 p.m. As a result, no trace of Yuki or her belongings were found. The police believe that the search was not detailed enough, and it is very likely that clues were missed. So the next day, the local police dispatched more than 3,000 people and several police dogs to conduct a more detailed search of the Gashikidai area again. On this day, the searchers found a strange thing while performing their mission in the bamboo forest. The six police dogs they sent followed Yuki's scent after entering the bamboo forest. Then the same thing happened as yesterday. Four of the six police dogs stopped in the same place and could not move on. This is the same spot where the dog stopped yesterday, which makes the police very puzzled. These police dogs are well trained and rarely go wrong. The four police dogs all reacted the same way, which should mean that Yuki's last stop was here. Police have conducted a careful search around the area, focusing on the shores of the nearby, Tombi Lake. But the result is still not found. At the same time, the police checked the surveillance of the Gashikidai Visitor Center and the car campsite after 1.30 p.m. that day. They hoped to find clues from the surveillance, but still nothing. 
And so the case came to an impasse. A month after the incident, the police heard a rumor. There is a local folklore that Tomby Lake devoured the little girl with evil forces. In fact, the police had considered the possibility of Yuki slipping and falling into the lake. However, the day of the incident was Greenery Day, and many people went to Gashikidai, and there were also many people at Tombi Lake. If someone accidentally falls into the water, there is a high probability that they will be seen. In order to find out the truth, the police mobilized a number of water pumps to drain all the water up to 3 meters deep in the lake, and then sent people to search in the silt at the bottom of the lake. As a result, Yuki was not found, nor any of her belongings. In desperation, the police announced the news of Yuki's disappearance to the whole country, hoping that someone could provide clues. After this incident was made public, it shocked the whole country. In particular, the sudden untraceability of the police dogs tracking to a certain place sparked public speculation. Many people think that Yuki may have really encountered a Shinin incident, just like the little girl in the movie Spirited Away, who accidentally broke into the world of gods and lost contact with the real world. However, such an explanation is unconvincing to the public who believe in science. Whether the Yuki incident is a Shinin incident or a man-made one, it seems that only by finding her can the answer be given. Five months after Yuki's disappearance, a Japanese TV show analyzed and discussed the case. Experts invited by the program team analyzed the behavior of police dogs. One of the ways police dogs work is to track the smell of shoes as they rub against the ground. Even if the stalking target is taken away, the police dog will continue to track the friction smell left by the suspect, so the stalking behavior will not stop for this reason. To this end, the program team carried out an experiment to verify the authenticity of this view with the experimental results. In the experiment, three locations A, B, C are set, a girl walks from point A to point B, and a man waiting at point B picks up the girl. The girl's feet are off the ground, and the girl's scent is cut off. Then the man carried the girl from point B to point C, and then let the police dog start tracking from point A. Since the journey from A to B was taken by the little girl herself, the police dog tracked it smoothly. Finally, starting from point B, the police dog can still accurately track point C. This experiment shows that even if someone picks up the girl and the smell of the girl on the ground disappears, the police dog can still switch the tracking target to the man holding the girl. In this case, the police dog stopped after tracking to a place and could not continue to track. This phenomenon has also sparked a lot of speculation among netizens. Some netizens boldly speculated that they thought Yuki might have been taken away from the air by something. It could be a helicopter or some sort of flying animal that could do that. This would explain why a police dog can't continue to track after it has chased a certain location. The situation of the helicopter should be directly ruled out, because a helicopter is over the bamboo forest, and the sound of its propeller is huge. This situation will be discovered immediately, let alone take a little girl after landing. There were no reports of helicopter sightings that day. So is it possible to be carried away by some kind of flying animal? Yuki is 106 centimeters tall and weighs 15.5 kilograms. The flying animals that can lift such a weight are eagles. Generally, these animals can grab objects two to three times their own body weight. Therefore, the animal must be very large, such as the golden eagle. It can be up to 102 centimeters in length and has a wingspan of 2.3 meters. The large golden eagle can weigh up to 6.5 kilograms. In theory, it can grab and lift a person weighing 15.5 kilograms. The golden eagle is a very ferocious animal, and its prey has dozens of species. There have also been many records of golden eagles attacking people around the world. However, this speculation is only theoretically possible, because no evidence such as the feathers of the golden eagle was found at the scene. Some netizens speculated that Yuki might have been attacked by beasts in the mountains, and the smell of the beasts stopped the police dogs in place, 
but the possibility of this happening is slim. The place where the police dog stayed was a bamboo forest. On the day of the incident, there were people everywhere in the bamboo forest, and a beast that could attack humans would definitely be discovered by more people. Even if not found, footprints or other traces may be left nearby. But there is no sign of wild beast activity in the vicinity, so it is unlikely to be attacked by wild beasts. Some netizens speculated that Yuki may have been taken away by the backpack man. According to witnesses, the suspicious man was carrying a huge backpack, which was very suitable for committing crimes. Yuki may have been hidden in a backpack. The location where the backpack man was seen that day can reach the place where Yuki was last seen. If the man hides a person who is more than 1 meter tall and weighs 15.5 kilograms in a backpack, Yuki's shouting will also be heard during the movement. But if Yuki was in a state of fainting at the time, then this is theoretically true. But according to the TV show team's experiment, even if Yuki is in the backpack, the police dog can continue to follow. Yuki was last sighted at 1.40 p.m., and the man with the backpack was sighted at 1.48 p.m., eight minutes later. When the man with the backpack continued to walk down to where Yuki was, she had already left. While the backpack man and Yuki's roots may coincide, the timing doesn't. The man with the backpack may not necessarily keep going down after entering the forest, and may change his route in the middle. Therefore, it is uncertain whether this incident is related to the backpack man. Some netizens said that police dog tracking may not be 100% accurate, and the surrounding environment and the state of the police dog on the day may affect the results. And there are plenty of ways to evade police dogs. It is difficult to restore the truth by relying on police dog tracking alone. Some netizens believe that the person who took Yuki away may be the one who participated in the bamboo shoot digging activity. They will take away the children who are alone, maybe they are a team. After finding Yuki was alone, someone will take her away, then he will hand over to another accomplice, and finally drive away. At that time Gashikidai had many families involved with countless children. Ordinary people don't even remember what color hat was on whose child's head. And even if someone sees a child being taken into the car, they don't feel anything wrong. One might assume that the person who took the child is the child's family. Due to the presence of accomplices, the police dog will smell multiple odors and it arrives at that location. The police dog cannot find out which smell is an accomplice, so it cannot continue to track. It is worth mentioning that this case is very similar to the disappearance of Misaki Ogura in 2019. They are all family camping or participating in activities in a certain mountain during the holidays. And their fathers were temporarily unable to participate in the event, which more or less makes things go in the wrong direction. Because the mother alone has no time to take care of two child, danger often occurs inadvertently. It has been 16 years since the disappearance of Onishi Yuki. If she were still alive, she would be 21 years old now. The police simulated a portrait of Yuki growing up, hoping that someone would recognize her. The police and Yuki's family have not given up their search. Maybe this case was really Shinin. Hope one day she can come back safely.